In the headlines, police say they are searching for a Tarboro woman who's been missing four weeks now. Last week's treacherous road conditions across the state are forcing the state transportation department to deplete their annual budgets. Postal rates will soon go up, but the cost of sending the basic letter is to remain the same. And some area citizens find a voice and get actions. That's in our Your Voice segment. These stories and more coming up on Newsbreak starting now. From WHIG TV, this is News Break 31. Now, here's Marie Torres. Thanks for tuning in to WHIG TV News Break, your voice in the community. I'm Marie Torres. North Carolina authorities have made some pretty big busts this last year with the amount of people driving while impaired. We'll hear the latest stats on those arrests for 2010 in just a moment. But first, police say they are searching for a Tarboro woman who's been missing for weeks now. Tarboro police say 22-year-old Amy Lynn Pitts was last seen on December 30th. She is described as a white female standing 5 foot 1 inches tall, weighing about 120 pounds. She has brown hair and and brown eyes. Anyone with information on her whereabouts or who has spoken to her is asked to call Tarboro Police at 252-641-4247. Last week's treacherous road conditions across the state is forcing the State Department, Transportation Department, and some municipalities to deplete their annual budgets for handling snow and ice. La with last Monday and Tuesday storms, crews still had a lot of work to do in some areas, including ridding leftover ice. North Carolina officials have already announced that allotted funds for snow and ice removal on state highways is nearly gone. You spending your refund check may be just a swipe away. Recently, the Treasury Department announced it is offering to put tax refunds on prepaid debit cards for low to middle income taxpayers who don't have bank accounts. The cards will be available for those who make $35,000 or less a year. Those who qualify should receive a letter this week offering to put their tax refunds on the debit card. Like most debit cards, there are fees entailed and the card is good for a year. The government is opting to use the cards to save them money. It costs just a few cents to send the card versus it costing them a dollar to send out a check. A perk for the consumer is that they can get a faster refund if they don't already have a bank account to forward the refund to, and they can use direct deposit for their jobs to reload the card. 2010 brought in a lot of arrests. North Carolina's highway safety campaign last year led to more than 16,000 arrests for people driving while impaired. The newly released statistics show the safety campaign led to safety campaigns led to more than 600,000 traffic and criminal citations with speeding as the top violation. A statewide booze it and lose it effort during the end of the year holiday season brought in the most DWIs. That's when about 4,000 people were arrested. Did. And at this year's 23rd annual Martin Luther King Jr. Unity Breakfast, two profound youth in our community spoke on their dreams for a better Rocky Mount. One of those speakers, a first place winner last year and this year's second place grade 9 through 12 oratorical winner, Brittany Bynum, spoke to a crowd inside the auditorium at the Dunn Center on North Carolina Wesleyan's campus. Take a look. I would like to take this time to share my dream with you all. Sometimes at night, as I lay down and think, I begin to toss and turn. Rocky Mountain has become impoverished. We are harming each other instead of helping one another. The teenage pregnancy rate is said to be one in three for women under the age of 20. When we speak of religion, we want to fade away into the nearest shadow. Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. came from the church and led millions of people to liberty. I believe we have many problems, but we do have one solution. I believe that solution is God. Forbes magazine has ranked the city of Rocky Mount among America's 10 most impoverished cities. The unemployment rate is said to be around 13.8%. 
It is overwhelming to see members of my own family, as well as other families, break down due to the deprivation of wealth. My dream is for new industries and businesses to be made, which will create more jobs. My dream is for our community to be swimming in surplus and not sinking in disparity. One of my dreams that I want to see turn into reality is the end of bullying. Bullying affects a person's self-esteem, destroys their confidence, and produces fear. For the Bible readers, it says that God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. I would also hope to see more unity and love and peace spread throughout our community. I do believe that bullying should be taken much more seriously, because sticks and stones will break someone's bones, but words will remain in someone's mind while it slowly deteriorates that person's soul. Another aspect of life that seems to perplex me is teenage pregnancy. I learned from the Adolescent Pregnancy Prevention Campaign of North Carolina that 56 out of every 1,000 teenage girls aged 15 through 19 became pregnant in 2009. We can solve this issue by effective abstinence and safe sex programs. A child does not need to raise a child. My dream is for teens to be more conscious and aware of their choices. I also dream of a generation where sex is not the number one center of receiving love, but God is. As I wrap up my dreams about poverty, school bullying, and teenage pregnancy, I remember Dr. King stating in his speech that his dream was to see that every valley shall be exalted, and every hill and every mountain shall be made low, and the rough places will be made plain, and the crooked places made straight, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. Our solution is God, but I believe we are too afraid to admit it. Martin Luther King Jr. changed the nation through God. My dream is for my city to prosper and for it to look better than ever before. We may be a small city, but I'm dreaming big things that God can do. We can rebuild our community with unity, love, and peace. Thank you. We congratulate Brittany and Quana Sessons, this year's first place winner for grades six through eight for their achievements. When we return on Newsbreak, some area citizens speak out and get action. You'll hear from them next in our Your Voice segment. Don't miss it. Patiently. Now it's time. Clearance time at Davenport Honda in Rocky Mount. Hundreds of brand new Hondas, all tagged with the year's lowest prices. With savings up to $6,000. And a lifetime warranty on every vehicle. But hurry, because at Davenport Honda, these deals are the one thing that won't last forever. Davenport Honda in Rocky Mount. Your dealership for life. WHIG, your community station, is bringing you news that's impacting our area. If you see breaking news or have an event you'd like us to cover, make sure you contact us at 252-885-1814 or email us at marie.whigtv at gmail.com. WHIG TV News Break, your voice in the community. The Country Inn and Suites is your home away from home with a staff that always treats you as family. If you or your church or company has visitors, give them a great Rocky Mount welcome with a special discount on their overnight or extended stay. Not only is the Country Inn and Suites a comfortable place, we'll spoil them with fresh cookies and complimentary breakfast. You're filled with luxuries like an indoor pool, fitness center, and a guest laundry. The business center includes a boardroom, connection to high-speed internet, and catering for meetings is always available. Call me, Donna Chavis, at 252-442-0500 for a tour and or to set up your corporate rate. You're always welcome as family in the country, country and in suites, rocking out. What? <laughs> 
Welcome back to WHIG TV News Break. I'm Marie Torres. Postal rates will soon go up, but the cost of sending the basic letter is to remain the same. The U.S. Postal Service says most rates will go up on April 17th under a formula that allows the agency to increase prices within the rate of inflation. They say the 44 cent price of a first class stamp will remain unchanged, but heavier letters are expected to cost more. Currently, the basic rate is for the first ounce and the price for each extra ounce will rise from 17 cents to 20 cents. In addition, there will be increases in the price of other mail, including periodicals, international letters and parcels, as well as advertising mail. State legislators will face the same challenges this upcoming session. According to North Carolina Lieutenant Governor Walter Dalton, while the economy is turning around, it has not resulted in revenue for the state. Dalton said the state will enter this year's session with growing needs, a growing population, and less budget. He adds community college enrollment is higher than it's ever been, and so has the population in the state. North Carolina has grown by 1.5 million people since the year 2000. In our last talk with Dalton, here's what he said about North Carolina competing in the global economy. The United States is still looked at as the leader in the world, but technologically and educationally, we got to watch ourselves. We have fallen behind a little bit in our educational efforts when you look at the other industrialized countries. Uh, people do need to understand that this is a global economy now and we are competing with the world, not with other states. I think that our jobs commission will bring North Carolina forward, address those workforce needs, have a focus on science, technology, engineering, and math where we need to pull our rankings up. North Carolina is about with most other states on that, but we need to move North Carolina ahead. If we do that, will not only be a leader in the United States, we'll be a leader in the world. And that's what you have to be to, in today's economy. Dalton is now midway through his first term as lieutenant governor and has served as state senator for six terms. For years now, these next area citizens have been concerned about their safety and what they say used to be a peaceful neighborhood. But for at least the last two years, they say a group home next door has gone unsupervised, leading to a lot of disruption. When calling everyone they could with the state, they finally spoke to us about what they are facing and what little is being done. Here they are in part one of our Your Voice segment. We're, we're having a problem with a mental group home. That's where, that's, I guess that's being funded by the state of North Carolina, and it's on the West Mount Drive and Stony Creek subdivision. Uh, we're having serious issues. It's been going on for quite a while where we've had to contact the state, and the state has come in two separate times and done investigations, and I've been contacted back by letter form and by phone by Miss Ames and another woman by the name of Lou Morton. And they have advised me that they have found serious violations of supervision at this particular mental group home. Since Christmas, we have had, by the week before Christmas, we had issues where we were having trespassing problems where people were going through my lot day and night. And um, we're also having issues with Peeping Tom. When we had the big snow, we could see the footprints where this particular individual was walking through my property line. He walked up around my back porch here, which I've got it fenced in now, and then walked back around my shed. And then my neighbor here contacted me. It was about 2 o'clock in the evening. I think it was on December the 27th, and I observed the gentleman, me, Joseph, that lives with me. We observed the gentleman going through my lot at that time. Later that night, at 10.30, there was another set of uh, prints right about along the same way where he had went back through again. Um, um, around the December the 13th, I had contacted the state about, they had a resident, she kept going over to my door and she kept ringing the doorbell. And she, I could tell that she, I knew she belonged over there next door to me. And she kept insisting on wanting to use the phone. And I had already done told her the day before, no, can I use the phone? I said, and I know they have cell phones because we see them standing there at the corner day and night with the cell phones talking on them. So, and I told her the last time, don't come back no more. 
Well, my neighbor that lives on the other side of the facility, he's also having the same issue with the same individual. She was going to his house at day and night, ringing the doorbell, wanting to use the phone, and he told her no. And then they observed her going down to the other house next to it, and of course nobody answered the door. And we're becoming to a fact now it's a safety issues, you know, because, you know, there's a lot of burglary and stuff. You know, we have to keep your eyes, you know. You have to be crime watch smart. Well, we, I had to contact the state again because um, the trespassing just kept on going on. So I contacted them, let them know that they keep coming over here and knocking on my doors. And also they came out and did an initial investigation. They couldn't prove the a point that they were knocking on our doorbells and all that, but they did prove the fact that there was no supervision. This story was first brought to you by us on Friday. Since the citizens contacted us last week, our collective calls to Rocky Mount Police led to the arrest of 47-year-old George Sutton, a registered sex offender who had a current warrant out on him for second-degree trespassing and assault on a female in Dare County. That warrant was out for him since 2003. Thursday, we'll dive more into the story and try to get some answers from the state. After the break, Fred is in to give us a look at the days ahead and weather. Stay with us. Now it's time. Clearance time at Davenport Honda in Rocky Mount. Hundreds of brand new Hondas, all tagged with the year's lowest prices. With savings up to $6,000 and a lifetime warranty on every vehicle. But hurry, because at Davenport Honda, these deals are the one thing that won't last forever. Davenport Honda in Rocky Mount, your dealership for life. WHIG, your community station, is bringing you news that's impacting our area. If you see breaking news or have an event you'd like us to cover, make sure you contact us at 252-885-1814 or email us at marie.whigtv at gmail.com. WHIG TV News Break, your voice in the community. The Country Inn & Suites is your home away from home with a staff that always treats you as family. If you or your church or company has visitors, give them a great Rocky Mount welcome with a special discount on their overnight or extended stay. Not only is the Country Inn & Suites a comfortable place, we'll spoil them with fresh cookies and complimentary breakfast. We are filled with luxuries like an indoor pool, fitness center, and a guest laundry. The business center includes a boardroom, connection to high-speed internet, and catering for meetings is always available. Call me, Donna Chavis, at 252-442-0500 for a tour and or to set up your corporate rate. You're always welcome as family in the country, country and in suites, rocking out. Thanks for staying with us. Can we expect more rain this week? WHIG TV meteorologist Fred Holsworth is in to tell us. Fred? Let's take a look at our upper air chart and we'll see what's going on. This is about 5,000 feet, what we call the upper, upper air 
chart at uh, 850 millibars, and that's a measure of pressure. But right here, this red line, this is a line we pay a lot of attention to in the wintertime. We like to refer to it as the, as the snow line. It's a zero degree temperature line or the 32 degree Fahrenheit line right here. And right now, down here, here we are well below this line, so this would mean that we're in the warmer in the warmer air, so the cold air is all bottled up well to our north. That's one reason we had rain last night instead of snow, because the upper atmosphere was just too warm to support it. Now, as that low moves up later this evening into New England, we'll see it getting into the colder air, and that will produce snow and sleet, sleet and freezing rain along the coast and snow back in the inland areas. Also, we would expect to see snow across any of this area right through here. Now, notice these lines come down. They come across the Gulf of Mexico and then up, so we would be in the warm air segment. But I'm afraid that's not going to last too much longer, as we will see a turn to colder temperatures by the weekend. Well, let's look at our forecast now for today. Cloudy with a high temperature of 47, northwest wind at 8. Showers developing late tonight with a low of 39, west wind at 6. Wednesday, chance of showers during the morning, clearing during the afternoon with a high of 58 and a west wind 10 to 15 miles per hour. Wednesday night will be clear with a low of 31 and a north wind at 8. Thursday, partly cloudy with a high of 52, wind southeast at 6. Thursday night cloudy, showers developing late Thursday night with a low of 40. Friday, sunny with a high of 47. Friday night, partly cloudy and colder with a low of 20. Partly cloudy and cold for Saturday with a high of 36 and a low Saturday night of 19. 47 was our high yesterday, 34 our low this morning, 59 hundredths of an inch of rain. And that's your Rocky Mount weather right up to the minute. Thanks, Fred. And as always, we're striving to be your voice in our community. If you see breaking news or you have an interesting story you want to share with us, be sure to give us a call at 252-885-1814, or you can email me at marie.whigtv at gmail.com. That's going to do it for us here today on Newsbreak. Join us Thursday as we continue to bring you news that's impacting our community. For WHIG-TV, I'm Marie Torres. We'll see you next time.